This is extremely impressive. And this is getting very close to what I've described in the past when it comes to put in a prompt and you get a full blown application. This is scary. This is cool. A lot of implications around this. In this video, let's go ahead and learn everything we need to know about Replit agents. The purpose of this video is that if you have little to no coding experience, or if you code a lot, we can go ahead and learn everything we need to know about this new technology when it comes to Replit agents and creating software. Sound good? Let's jump in. Here's the situation and here's the use case of Replit agents and why you probably be seeing them in your feed. The idea is this. When you code out software or websites, typically there is a lot more that is entailed other than just the code itself. There is a pain involved in the sense of building out a development environment, deploying it, having a storage and database, like everything entailed with building out software is a lot more than just, you know, you have one file, you put your code in and something happens. And that is why Replit Agent exists now. So we can use Lemon Dictation to code out software and websites. Let's jump in. Right off the bat, create a Replit account. When you get to this page here, which right now is on home, You'll notice a nice little new feature here called Replit Agent. And the idea here is that we can simply talk to it. You know, I'll put some code here. So we have some options here, such as local landmarks map, stock analysis, waitlist website, and view more. This is pretty solid as that by me clicking view more, we can get some ideas of what we can even do with Replit Agent and its use case here. For example, we got book scanner, which is really random, but okay. Let's go ahead and try this prompt right here, which is pretty cool, which is link in bio. This kind of reminds me of like link tree. Try the prompt. Click. Make a link bio app, which presents all social media accounts in an easy, intuitive, aesthetic interface. Use a random image for a profile picture placeholder for now. Start building. Now, of course, we're going to give a little disclaimer here as this is all new tech. And like if people purchase this plan and they're just like, what, what the heck just happened? This doesn't work. It's experimental. This is a big thing in software. They're just like, oh, yeah, it's in beta or oh, it's an alpha. So if there's errors, there's errors. Continue. We are developing a new website with Replit AI and all I did was add a sentence. So compared to what we've seen in the past when it comes to this kind of tech is this is very much like it's taking it step by step rather than like outputting a ton of code and being like, have fun. It's very much step by step here, which is cool. So the first major thing it's asking me here is would you like any additional features? We can also make changes later. Pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and try this one right here. In theory, I could select all these if I chose to do so. But for now, let's just see the use case here. So we're going to say proof plan and start. How the UI is gonna look right here is that it will start creating the underlying files like this, which shows craziness. It'll drop them over here to our left right here, and then we'll have a conversation all the way to the right right there. It'll also give us a nice little outline of what's even occurring here, created main pi, created static CSS styles.css. Like it's just giving us the overarching structure of what's occurring here and here. This is extremely impressive, and this is getting very close to what I've described in the past when it comes to putting a prompt and you get a full blown application. This is scary, this is cool, a lot of implications around this. So within this user interface, this is our underlying files associated with it. It's like a repository. Over here is going to be, or this is like the actual like, how does it look? And then all the way to the right here is our chat. So the first thing it actually prompts us to confirm or not is whether or not this looks good. So everything looks good here except the profile picture, right? So the Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, GitHub, you know, all the placeholders are pretty good right here. So what I'm gonna do here is tell it that. Let's go and try this prompt here. Everything looks good except the random profile picture. Can we load in an image here and make it a circle? Also for your name, put Corbin Brown. And for the brief bio, put subscribe, maybe. Let's see how it engages. Send. It is thinking. I'll say what we're seeing here today is impressive. I'm not saying this isn't impressive at all. But from a full stack engineer's perspective here, there are some drawbacks. Make sure to subscribe here as I'm going to make a video later this week comparing Cursor AI, VS Code, and Replay, all these IDEs, and showing you which one you should actually choose if you plan on building out a full-blown software application that will actually make you money. Sound good? Let's keep going here. As a side note, though, I do pay for Linktree, and this entire experience is making me feel like I should just make my own Linktree for my own personal use case. No more $6 a month. No more. No more. Okay, so it does seem like this can get in a loop here. I'm gonna go in and stop the thinking here. This has been too long for just simply providing a image for a profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and provide that myself. I'm gonna go ahead and provide the prompt. Use this as a profile image. I use that little attach feature here. Hit send. Okay, we got it. It's not really centered, but we got it. I'm gonna go ahead and let this keep thinking here. Let me just walk you through a little bit of this user interface. So right off the bat, anything that we do here, Oh, it's going, it's going. Anything we do here, we can essentially come over here to our left here. But in our left here, this is kind of where we're storing our entire repository, right? So this is where the main.py comes into play. This is the underlying code that we see within this web view here. This is the image that I uploaded earlier. And what's cool about this is that basically within the actual conversational setting here, we can actually, you know, put code here as well if we chose to do so. But keep in mind, while the agent's working, you can actually edit the code files. 
So let it keep thinking. Beyond that, we can actually add files here. We can also add folders here. And that's the purpose of structuring an application for scale and production level ready software. If you want to see a whole video dedicated to that topic, check out that video right there. I give you my insight from the software I'm currently developing that's backed by Google on how to do it. Once it's done, it will prompt us with a follow along question here. In theory, I can come to the main.py. Now I can add code if I choose to do so. On top of that, I can see its entire timeline that it took to reach that endpoint we see with this web view here, right? So for example, it edited main.py, edited templates.index.html, et cetera. In addition, on top of this little timeline here, you can see what has changed based off the previous output with the little yellow. When a file is yellow in code, that means something has changed. Something is different from what it was originally. Now, obviously the profile image isn't centered, but this is all early days. That's why we got that little disclaimer saying this isn't perfect, but now we can change the theme color, right? We can go to dark theme or, or we can't. <laughs> This just shows you y'all that, you know, this is early days still. Let me back up. Can we go to light theme? Okay, I guess we're technically running light theme or default theme. So it's not perfect, obviously, but it shows you where this is going. Now from here, we can of course deploy the app. So all we have to do is simply hit deploy your app. I can go ahead and do an entire video on this. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. But in today's video, I just wanted to show you the use case of this Replit agent. Also for context, deploy means like put it on the internet. You have a link, someone else can access it. It is in localhost 3000 where only you can access it. That just about does this video. So don't click off yet. I wanna leave you two major things. First major thing is that when you deploy in this kind of situation, you are paying premium on deployment of your underlying application. Therefore, if you wanna see how to actually deploy an application in the context of raw coding and getting all the way to an endpoint where a website is live and you're paying the absolute most cost effective rate on the market right now, check out that 30 minute video. It comes with Google Docs. I show you a chat GPT chat, how everything works. This will show you how to deploy an application the most cost effective way. The second thing I'll leave you with is that I'm gonna do an entire video showing you why you would use Replit, why you wouldn't use Replit, as there's reasons why you wouldn't. So make sure to stay tuned here, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. What do y'all think of the Replit agent? You're gonna use it, you're not gonna use it? Check out those random videos chosen by YouTube. That's my face, and I'll see you in the next video.